All right, so once again, we are doing a bike fast facts. This time, something a little different, a little more powerful, a little bigger, the Turn Aurox. If you know Turn, you know they make folding bikes. They are very well known for their extremely popular GSD and HSD model series, as well as the NBD, all these cool kind of compact electric bikes. But the one thing that's changed big time is tires. These things are massive, uh, proper, fat bike on this thing with clearance for 29 plus as well so you can really open up some off-road potential and speaking of off-road you may notice there is no suspension um, which i think is actually a great choice for something that's kind of marketed as a kind of an atv of a bike you know something that's durable simple comes with full fenders you know intended for serious utilitarian functionality while also being super fun so in this video, we're gonna be talking about the Aurochs, not so much as like a play-by-play -play of every little fact, more kind of my first ride impressions. So I've already ridden this around a little bit, just around the block, and honestly, it's super fun, I like it, but my first thought is it's gotta be great off-road, and Turn even offers slightly different weight ratings depending on how you're gonna be using it. So <clears throat> their on-road hauling uh, weight capacity is gonna be a little more than their off-road hauling capacity. All right, so here we're just pulling up to the brickworks. I think this is a great opportunity to test some of the kind of assist levels on some nice little steep climbs. So we're kind of easing ourselves into the off-road testing today. I'm gonna do a little bit of gravel path work. And then we're gonna do some paved switchbacks just to kind of feel how, how this kind of handles just, you know, for the sake of it. And then we're gonna advance from that into a little bit of single track. If you're not already familiar with the Brickworks, this is a former brick factory down in the Don Valley in Toronto, and they've converted it kind of into a, a recreational space. Uh, it's quite beautiful, nice ponds. It's just an old quarry that they've uh, kind of renaturalized. Great spot to see some wildlife and birds, some turtles. Also a great trail connection if you want to, you know, check out some kind of fun mixed terrain stuff not far from downtown Toronto. So so far, loads of traction. I have you know pretty pretty firm pressure. I don't know the exact PSI. I didn't check before I left, but more pressure than I'd normally ride off road. But there's such a big contact patch. It's total breeze to ride this stuff. Obviously it's just gravel. Probably hear it over my mic. <laughs> a lot of contact, a lot of gravel, grip, which I think is a overall a good thing. So we're just cruising along in Eco right now, kind of midway up the cassette. Uh, it's kind of undulating terrain. You know what? I, I like this. It still feels like riding a bike. You know, I'm not going to dance around it. The Orox is not a light bike. It's extremely capable. It is a cargo bike. All right. So now Let's shift down, it feels it. All right, so we're in the lowest gear, just spinning up here. Eco mode, all right, we're gonna crank it up a little bit just to give us some help, because eco, I can hear it working, but this is a seriously steep quarry wall we're going up. All right, tour, I could feel it kick immediately. That helps a ton, which I like. This actually feels like it's pulling me up the hill almost at this point. Just for fun, let's try the e-mountain bike and the tour or the uh, turbo. All right, there's e-mountain. Oh, yeah, that's got a ton of torque. That's fantastic. I can hear the motor working actually, which is not normal. Maybe I'm just used to riding these in downtown Toronto where it's so loud. Turbo. <laughs> Turbo's got such a kick that actually, <laughs> you can really rely on that motor. I had to shift to a harder gear because I was spinning. I was giving plenty of torque, signaling to the motor to go harder, but I couldn't pedal fast enough to keep up. So, interesting. Well, you know what, I think for steep climbing, Tour feels the most natural to me. I like that, a paved climbing, of course, so it's relative, but, uh, Let's pull over and take a little walk through on the bike. So 
So what I love about this bike is it's a very kind of outside the box thinking uh, from a company that does also, you know, kind of outside the box designs. Uh, Turn, if you don't already know them, they're best known for their GSD model, which has been a su supremely popular, super successful, compact, urban, pedal assisted cargo bike. So it's kind of the, one of those class leading bikes that becomes a benchmark for a lot of people. We all constantly are comparing bikes from GSD to something else. Uh, and this is kind of the big sibling to the GSD. What's really cool about this is uh, it uh, maintains a lot of the same kind of features of the GSD, but just in a kind of beefed up uh, package. So you'll notice it does have this frame bag on there, but that actually is designed to protect the battery against cold conditions. You'll also see another battery behind the seat tube. So it actually does have double battery capacity. Right now we just have one on here, but that's something optionally you can add. When you buy an Aurox, it has two uh, cradles. So you can choose to put the battery either spot. Um, obviously, if you're only using one, it kind of makes more sense to use it behind the seat tube because uh, not only is the weight very central, but you have some added storage on the front. In this demo model here, we have a front rack added. We have some really cool running boards here that are adjustable. There's a few different settings you can have them on. Uh, I love these things. They're super handy when you want to convert this thing to cargo mode. Uh, Turn is not necessarily known for off-road bikes. But what I like about this is you can tell they intended this to be a purpose-driven design. It's kind of that ATV quality of bike. What's neat is you can tell they actually did the, their homework and they released uh, recommended weight ratings for not only when you're riding on road or trail or flat stuff, but actually when you're taking it off-road through rough stuff. So obviously this is not an enduro bike. It's not a downhill bike. Um, if you're looking at the geometry, especially that head tube and seat tube angle, um, honestly, I'd say they're pretty average. They're not modern or progressive for mountain bike standards, but they're modern progressive in the sense that it's an off-road kind of overland style rig. So if you're looking for something that's maybe bike packable, uh, maybe a cargo friendly kid hauling uh, kind of situation, I know they market this even for like kind of trail work, which is really cool. Um, it, it's honestly one of those bikes you kind of look at and your kind of imagination starts going because it honestly is so fun looking and you're like, wow, there's so much potential baked into the design here um, that I think it's hard not to think about what you could be doing. So uh, we rolled in here came in through the brickworks. We came along this lovely little rail bed path, uh, which I, I was not concerned at all about because uh, this is an extremely stable bike. Uh, I did not air down, which I think I may because I'm about to go into some more off-road trails. Um, we're going to kind of see how this goes. I'm not trying to like work this bike hard. It's actually much hotter than I expected today. And I uh, foolishly brought zero water because I was thinking, oh, just a quick little video, but uh, I got carried away as usual. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll through some path, maybe take a little off road and kind of see how it handles. Uh, it's a long bike. I actually don't think it's that different than my current trail bike, but it's handles very different. And obviously it weighs a little more with those batteries and the motor. So let's do a little testing. So for reference, this might seem a little reckless, but <laughs> I've been riding these trails for probably actually over a decade now. Um, the big thing I will say is I've never done it with a kickstand. I know it's going to wobble around a little. So truly doing off-road riding is a little dodgy in that way. I'm going to be a little cautious because I'm not trying to, you know, work this thing too hard. I think we're going to start with, uh, that was a little eco mode. We're going to switch to e-mountain bike and keep it on a lower gear yeah nice <laughs> Woo so it definitely doesn't feel nimble it feels very planted so another thing i find a little different with this bike is i'm not used to that fat bike stance which is a really wide q factor and yeah you can definitely hear that kickstand if you are taking it off road all right big downshift here this is a Quite a climb oh yeah i love this help <laughs> i made the right call made the call to downshift made the call to air down and that feels fantastic you can hear the motor actually working a little bit but yeah it's really interesting so when you downshift you can totally feel the motor kick in so much more when you're cruising around on the flat you kind of forget its assist it feels easy i'll be honest this thing's you know a bit of a beast so i find 
where I'd normally ride with a motor off. Eco feels perfect just cruising around. Um, Tour is my favorite, I think, for cruising, for sure. Gives you a little more helping hand. It is a cargo bike after all, and I'm riding through the dawn on it. <laughs> we'll see how much of the ridge I actually feel like tackling. I'm gonna take my time. So I think this has secured it with me being just super fun. Because in my mind, it's like, yeah, cargo bike. It's gonna be probably the most ex one of the most expensive bikes you buy. It's kind of nice that it's actually fun to ride. Uh, I don't think this would be my weekly or daily <laughs> use for it, but just to kind of see how it really handles, because obviously you can go anywhere to get a, a little something on YouTube and hear about the spec list and all that stuff. Woohoo! Yeah! <laughs> all right, definitely doesn't feel super playful, but. <laughs> okay, oh, there we go. Woohoo! Nice. All right, I took it down a little. I could feel the kickstand vibrating a little bit there. <laughs> All right. Yeah, wow. I think if I were really gonna be doing some like trail building, I probably would opt to not have a kickstand because that's the only thing that doesn't feel, you know, really driven on this thing to be ridden off road, but and nicely, they've included some great features like the GA3 Ergon grips. They feel fantastic. They're one of my go-to riding grips. They're comfortable off-road, but, you know, also very trail-capable grips. But also, you don't sacrifice your comfort just for a little better control. Oh, I'm not hitting the jump, that's for sure. <laughs> Scrubbing must be a little. It is a little bit of a adjustment having that long back end. I think that's also where I'm starting to slip out. I'm misjudging where the rear wheel is. I know exactly where the front wheel is, but it, it still has that little delay. So I think I think I could get pretty good. <laughs> oh yeah. A little wet in that corner. But damn. I am impressed. Not to say I didn't expect this to perform well, but it's uh <laughs> all right i'm, I'm kind of feel like i'm cheating now because i'm just riding e-mountain bike but it, it does it so well the torque is incredible and this is one of those little switchbacks that's probably going to test my understanding of the wheelbase but you know what the long tail going down you don't have to point it in an unfamiliar direction it goes exactly where it wants to uh, i'd say wider Oh yeah, a little wider is probably better for uh, focusing. So I think at this point we're gonna, you know what, we're gonna do it. All right. All right, we're doing tour off-road just to see how she fares. So I think I'm definitely favoring lower gears just so I know I have the torque I'm not relying on the motor a ton um, I think if you actually are riding anything kind of technical the uh, e-mountain bike really kicks a lot more than I expected we're gonna go the easy route this way hopefully it's dry and clear <laughs> couple rocks here Yep, 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 yep. So I'm actually liking the e-tour, or the tour rather, a little better, I think. It's more predictable. Well, yeah, this feels fantastic. Yeah, here we go. Oh, yeah. Should probably lower my seat. I'm just, I'm that weirdo who likes the full leg extension even when riding technical stuff. All right, okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna drop the seat a little bit because this is fun enough. I need a little more clearance. And I think, oh, so low. All 
I think I'll have a little more fun getting the low. If I have the seat low too, because that center of gravity is in kind of an unfamiliar space. Yeah, there we go. That's beautiful. Oh, I love it. A little schmucky. Here we go. Yeah, we're still cruising along in tour mode. I think tour mode is, you know, just makes this feel like a normal bike. E-mountain bike in turbo make it feel like a rocket ship. Feels like a moped. <laughs> oh yeah, this is lovely. Yeah, I will say I'm incredibly impressed with the quality of these fenders. I do not have a high expectation for them and it is just kicking butt. All right, yeah, so hopefully I'm not wheezing too heavily. We're just approaching usually some a section that I'd love to send, but we're going to take it easy here. A lot of clear cutting here from the Metrolinx Ontario line. It's pretty bleak and kind of sad. I'm not going to take the fun jump line, although it's somewhat tempting. Woohoo! All right, yep, chunky, chunky. Oh yeah, jump line is real. Wow, that looks hella fun. Oh yeah, it's real loose, but damn. <laughs> I think I'm gonna need a little help on this next climb. Yep, 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 yep. We're going, we're going e-mountain bike because I don't trust the turbo. I don't trust my abilities with the turbo. Climbing. Oh, this is not even fair. This is one of those climbs that sometimes I just can't do. And I, <laughs> I just feel like I have a winch pulling me up. And that just feels so planted. Oh my God. Oh, I'm tempted to just ride straight up those roots, but I still don't think I have a good enough grasp on that rear wheel traction to do it. Frankly, I'm amazed. <laughs> All right, going back to tour mode. We're just gonna take it easy. I think this has been a very eye-opening experience for me. I think I didn't expect to get, well, I don't wanna call this rowdy. It's pretty tame mountain bike riding, but still it is, you know, way more than I could have hoped for. And, uh, yeah, if you're interested in this bike, we got this one in stock right now. We can always order more. Another thing I should definitely point out here is um, the model I'm even more excited about is the R14 or the roll-off equipped one because mid-drive electric systems, when combined with a internal hub, especially a, a high range one, uh, they are like nothing else. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I gotta get low here. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, we got a little swamp here. Good thing I have fenders. All right, big downshift. Let's go e-mountain bike. Let's go turbo. <laughs> this is unfair. <laughs> oh my God, the long wheelbase. It's weird, it's just like a different take on a modern mountain bike in this strange way. But damn. Turn, you've outdone yourself. I think this is probably the most interesting bike in the shop right now. It's just kind of, not what I would have expected from Turn, but I, I think, frankly, when they went from folding bikes to the GSD, it was kind of the same thing. I never expected that from them. Uh, and we also, you know, it took time for people to kind of fully adopt and embrace it. I think this might be, you know, on paper, a little kooky, but wow, this is incredible. 
Woo. All right, here we go. Downshift, downshift, downshift. We got turbo on. Here we go. Oh. oh my goodness. Wow. I was just laying it down sideways in my lowest gear, full turbo. You can feel yourself bumping and losing traction, but once you're out of that seat, because the back end is so weighted and grounded, it somehow manages to recover. Wow. I am, you know what? I knew this was going to be fun. I had no idea it was going to be this fun. All right. Woohoo. It's probably one of the biggest learning curve things about a uh, pedal assist um, bike like this. It's got a lot of torque and just like you want to lay off the acceleration when you're shifting on most derailleur systems, it's something you still do have to have in the back of your mind because although this is a very, you know, well thought out bike, there are certain, you know, physical features of a derailleur that it doesn't usually want to be <laughs> cranked out shifting under load to, you know, get where you're going. Oh yeah. Oh. So yeah, keep that in mind. Don't shift under load. You still want to back off the pedal because those torque sensors are, you know, they're good. And they know when you're pushing hard. And if you're pushing hard to climb a hill and shift at a bad time, your derail is going to not like it. And that is probably the biggest learning curve of this. It's not that different than riding a normal bike, but you know, I've been working at bike shops a long time and people still have questions. Ooh, Kung Fu Squirrel, nice. <laughs> this is out of control. All right, so my takeaways from this is I'm super impressed. <laughs> I think we can all agree it's a fun looking bike. Man, it rides like nothing I've ever tried. And I think that's what I find the most exciting. It's just really an outside the box thinking. Um, I'm not sure if this is actually true, but it really feels like the motor kind of winds up and pushes you through stuff too, even if you've leveled out your cranks, which is kind of nice. It really feels like it helps you clear the obstacles you're trying to set up for. Uh, but wow, the Bosch, Bosch system is just fantastic. Not doing the jump. <laughs> I will say if you like to jump, this is not a jumping bike. <laughs> that weight does not want to leave the ground, which is honestly kind of confidence inspiring. It's real fun. Woohoo! All right, wrapping it up here, almost on the trail. We're gonna go over the skinny. Yup. Wee. And we're just gonna tear off right here. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you had as much fun watching as I did riding, which is probably unlikely, but uh, yeah. Do you think you've seen anything quite like this before? I don't, this is honestly, I think it's, groundbreaking feels like a stretch, but honestly, I can't think of anything on paper that feels quite like this. It's, you know, kind of feels like a new category. Off-road cargo? Who's done this? Woo! I am cooked. Oh yeah, I do. Oh wow, that's amazing. Let's kick it up a little bit. Yeah. Most cargo bikes don't like to be ridden without hands, but proof of the pudding. Well, the assist just helps me. 